Episode 1, Friendship is Magic. After a thousand years, a system of stars that existed the night of Nightmare Moon's defeat is realigned. The magical lock keeping the imprisoned nightmare in place is finally broken. The stars have a power of their own. That much is made clear. They are an ever-present force that half the time is rarely even seen. It is no exaggeration to say we know more about how magic works than what exists beyond Equestria's planetary sphere. So what do we know, and what can we derive, in regards to MLP's larger universe, and what life forms might exist on other worlds? Equestria exists on an Earth-like planet that, for the time being, lacks an actual name. For the sake of simplicity, we will refer to this planet as Magisus Terra. Much like the planet Earth, Magisus has a star and one large natural satellite, also referred to as the Moon. References have been made to several other moons, 14 altogether. This is similar to the Earth, which has many suspected quasi and temporary satellites, asteroids that are briefly captured by the Earth's gravitational field. It is at least worth addressing, however, such a reference might not actually be applicable to Magus's terror, but rather to a neighbouring planet, since this detail was not specifically addressed. It is not known whether the current orbital pattern is due to the rotation of Magus's being slowed or completely stopped, or if the momentum of the planetary bodies themselves are impeded by some unseen force. In-universe references to the concept of planets suggest the existence of such bodies and various background images seem to point towards planets having their own orbits. Given the unique orbital structure of the Magisus system, it is interesting to ponder how such planets aren't affected by the Sun's orbit. It's also strange that Magisus, the Moon, and the Sun are the only bodies to exhibit an artificial orbit. Multiple references have been made in the universe to specific constellations that match our own. The implication is that Magisus Terra exists in the same location as Earth, adding fuel to the theory that Magisus is but a parallel universe version of Earth. An interesting note in regards to Magisus Terra is the apparent connection between its naturally occurring magic and its spatial inactivity. An example of this can be seen through its comparison to the world of the Equestria Girls universe, which we shall call Terra Alaya. The lie is much closer to our own world in the sense that all natural forces work independent of control. Magic is also a rarity on a liar, with the only apparent source being leakage from the primary MLP universe. While the connection is still speculative, the comparison is still present. The idea of magic as a restraining force would also explain why the planets of the Magisus system are still locked in their current orbit rather than being affected by the sun's gravity. The closest glimpse of the stars we have had so far is in the Ursa Minor and its adult equivalent, the Ursa Major, from the episode Boastbusters. The creature takes on the form of a gigantic bear-like animal, composed of a mysterious translucent substance that contains what appears to be stars. A little information can be sourced regarding this species, However, the fact that such creatures mirror their associated constellations suggests an apparent connection. Indeed, it is implied that such constellations are in fact canon to the show's universe. As for what the Ursa can actually be classified as, the two possibilities that come to mind include either a spirit or a chimera. The idea of the species being spiritual in nature, not unlike the Windigo, would fit with the semi-corporeal quality of its form. As yet, however, it does not appear to possess the kind of magical abilities common to such life forms. But what about the creatures being a form of Chimera? We've seen, for example, such as fruit bats and cragodiles, that hybrid animals are not limited in variety to other species, but can also be blended with elements of the environment. Whether this is a deliberate adaptation towards camouflage or an unintentional change, is it possible for the Ursa to be a hybrid of a bear with the literal night sky? In classical alchemy, there are four main elements, earth, fire, air, and water. The hypothetical fifth element, ether, 
was believed by some to be the substance that filled the void beyond our atmosphere. This theory has officially been put to rest. However, given the show writer's habit of drawing from mythology, the subject of ether would provide an adequate explanation for creatures such as the Ursa. It's hard to say whether the species evolved on the planet's surface or elsewhere. Given the numerous other constellations in existence, some being referred to in-universe, it doesn't seem impossible for other such stellar species to be in occurrence. If the theory of ether does indeed apply to the MLP universe, this does bring up numerous implications and many other questions. The existence of cosmic debris is evidenced by the phenomena of meteor showers, cases of which have been observed in the episodes Owl's Well That Ends Well and Apple Family Reunion. The largest meteor shower we have seen up until now is the one from Owl's Well That Ends Well, which was described in the universe as a centennial event. Another more interesting reference appears in the episode Once Upon a Zeppelin, and the example of the Northern Stars. Described as a reoccurring phenomenon in which several shooting stars skim the northernmost region of Magisus, the reoccurring nature of the phenomena seems to classify said objects as meteoric in nature, most likely comets. This could be our first direct evidence of a natural orbit. How such objects seem to move when others, like the moon, have to be carried is not yet made clear. A factor of interest to the society is the presence of the shooting stars in Apple Family Reunion, which have been directly linked to the bereavement of the Apple Family parents by out-of-universe sources. It is easy to make such a connection given the circumstances, however, if this statement is one of literal fact, it leads to a lot of questions. Do other such astral phenomena represent the souls of the departed? Are souls even an in-universe fact? These questions link to another previously discussed topic that of whether ghosts exist in universe. Without being able to fully confirm the validity of the source, such questions are no closer to being answered. However, this does raise another question. Is it possible for at least some of the stars we see in Equestria's night sky to be actual living things? With the confirmation that other planets exist, comes the speculation in regards to what kind of life may exist on them. The presence of magic provides an interesting contrast to our own universe and invites yet more room for conjecture. But is it even possible to prove magic is a universal constant and not just limited to the Magister system? Our best lead may in fact be the first episode, and the moment Nightmare Moon was released from imprisonment, due simply to how the stars aligned. The fact that a series of solar bodies light years away can affect the planet enough to break a banishment spell seems to indicate that magic is indeed a universal constant, or otherwise just sensitive to solar radiation. Given how many different species on Magis' terror have been affected by and adapted to utilize magic, it is interesting to theorize how life on other worlds may have evolved. With our limited view of these worlds, however, our best window into such possibilities comes from Magis' terror itself. Given the numerous similarities between our world and the MLP universe, it makes sense to apply the field of ufology to the subject matter. Our closest direct reference to extraterrestrial life in the show is a passing mention made to a book called Alien Alicorns vs. Space Pirates, likely a work of fiction in universe. In the IDW comics, the moon is shown to be populated by creatures known as the Nyx, although the canonicity of the comics compared to the show is still debatable. Given how ponies seem to be analogous to humans in the MLP universe, perhaps it makes sense for their interpretation of extraterrestrial life to be inspired by or at least interpreted based on what they view as normal. Viewed through this lens, supposed entities such as greys, reptilians, and even the grinning man could just as easily be reinterpreted, not unlike the slender mane. Given the subject of the aforementioned book, the term alien alicorns becomes far less absurd when you realize alicorns are pretty much the most powerful beings in the MLP universe aside from dragons. Therefore, if someone was to witness something otherworldly, it is not beyond the pale to imagine them making such a comparison. As the society has previously stated, 
It is possible for more figurative elements of human culture to become far more literal in the context of a fictional universe. The citizens of Clowsdale and Los Pegasus, being located far above the rest of Equestria, might have the best view of such occurrences. Given how phenomena of this nature is never reported on screen, however, it is hard to prove such a possibility for the time being. We may never get a full glimpse of the world beyond Equestria's planetary sphere, but perhaps that is just as well, as it leaves us a lot of room to let our imagination fill in the gaps.